Mr. Speaker, I rise today to stand shoulder to shoulder with the legitimate aims of Syrian people in their quest for freedom and democracy. Ever since the Syrian people rose up to demand their rights and dignity from the Assad regime, they have faced brutal repression. Their nonviolent protest movement has been met with repressive force, and this has been a disgrace on the world scene. The human rights abuses of the Assad regime are unthinkable, and they're historic and generational. It is torturing its own people at this time, including even children. I was shocked and outraged by the story of Hamza al Khatib. He's a 13-year-old boy who was killed and tortured, and his body was returned to his family on May 25th with clear signs of torture and brutality. He had a broken hand. His genitals were cut off and severed. And he, uh, and, and this young man, only, only 13 years old, uh, will never, never really see, will, will, will never see his family again because he's gone, gone on. But, he, but what happened to him, the Syrian people can't forget, and his example has inspired people to stand up for democracy. Over the past three months, a familiar pattern has emerged. People organized public demonstrations to demand their God-given rights. Inevitably, the government forces overreaction and kills peaceful protesters. Funerals for the deceased garner even larger demonstrations, which are then repressed ever more brutally by the government. The emergency situation in Syria today has reached a new level. When tanks rolled into Dara since that time, hundreds of peaceful demonstrators have been killed. Just this morning, this very morning, Syrian forces killed 15 people when they shelled a town of Rastan. 58 have been killed there in the past three days alone. Over 1,000 have been killed since democracy protests began. Mr. Speaker, it's truly unfortunate that the Assad regime missed the historic opportunity that it had right before it to set a new pattern in the Arab Spring, a pattern that above all respects human rights. Instead, it chose to become an enemy of its own people. By murdering its own people and violating their fundamental right to security and liberty, the Assad regime has lost any and all legitimacy to govern. Legitimacy is gained through consent of the governed, not re brutal repressive crackdowns, jailings, and torturing. While we don't yet know how, many, how events will ultimately unfold in Syria, I want to commend the activism of Syrian Americans. Syrian Americans are doing everything they can to support their friends and their family. For example, just last week, the Syrian American Council organized a day of action to support freedom and democracy in Syria. Some 400 plus Syrian Americans came all across the country to come to Washington, D.C. to lobby their representatives in Congress, to demonstrate at the Syrian embassy, and to organize committees to plan future initiatives. That's how democracy works, Mr. Speaker. People coming together with a common concerns to peaceably petition their government. That's what makes America great, and that's what sets us apart from places like Syria under the Assad regime. Syria could be a great bastion of liberty, but not with this illegitimate regime. I stand with the patriotic Americans who with steadfast opposition of this grotesque human rights abuses of the Assad, of the Assad regime, and once and for all, call on it to respect the right, dignity, and democ democratic aspirations of its people. The world will not forget Hamza al Khatib, Mr. Speaker. We won't forget the legitimate yearnings for liberty and justice from the people of Syria or anywhere in the world. Thank you. I yield back.